Okay, so let's see if you can figure out how to solve this math word problem. Matter of fact, this is not that difficult of a problem to solve. But let me go ahead and read the question. It is as follows. Two trains pass each other going east-west with rates of 65 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour respectively. How long before the trains are 330 miles apart? Now we do have a multiple choice question here and let me go ahead and read the answers. So A is 45 minutes, B is 1.4 hours, C is 2.2 hours, and D is 3.5 hours. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course I'm gonna walk through step by step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. Uh, so we have two trains. Matter of fact, let me highlight this so we're crystal clear about what's going on. So we have two trains. They pass each other going east-west with rates of 65 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour. And the question is, how long before these trains are 330 miles apart? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is C. 2.2 hours so that is the right answer again c 2.2 hours and if you got this right well you definitely get a happy face an a plus a 100 percent and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in solving a basic algebra motion word problem now that is a math a mouthful and uh, of course, I did mention the word algebra. Now, I don't like to say solved algebra word problem because a lot of people, uh, they typically have a bad kind of, um, you know, reaction to algebra word problems. They're like, hey, algebra word problems, you know, they make my hair stand up. I don't want to do that. Well, that's why I just say solve the problem because a lot of people, even if you don't know algebra, may be able to reason through and figure out the answer. But of course, I'm going to be using algebra because algebra is a tool. But uh, again, as I indicated, this is not that difficult of a problem. There's one aspect to this problem that I think could be a little bit confusing, but uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so here is our problem. Now, let's suppose you are facing this on a math test or an exam, for those of you that are still students, and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I really don't know what to do. Well, just take a guess. You have a one out of four chance to get this thing right, never ever ever leave a math question blank. The only time that you may leave a question blank is, is, excuse me, if you're taking a test where you'll get penalized for a wrong answer. And uh, tests like the SAT or ACT do have uh, those type of penalties. But in this case, just take a guess. Maybe like, I don't know, 45 minutes seems pretty logical. You know, you may have a sense of 65 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour. And that's a good guess. Unfortunately, it is wrong, but at least you tried. So the way to really get this problem right is, of course, to just know the math. And the math here is not that difficult. But what we have to do is relate what? Well, we have rates, okay? So a rate, another word for rates, um, well, you, well, there's a technical definition in mathematics for, uh, for what a rate is. But when you hear rate, um, you can kind of think of velocity or speed, right? So we have uh, these trains with these speeds, 65 miles per hour and 85 miles per hour. And uh, what we're looking for is what? How long? Okay, so we're looking for uh, time, right? So we have speed uh, or rate, right? So we have rate, uh, we're looking for time, and we have miles, right? Which is what distance. So we're gonna need to relate distance, time, and speed, or rate, time, and distance. And there is a formula here that hopefully you know, and if you don't know, well, these are one of these uh, important formulas that you want to put in your long-term memory. But uh, again, uh, here, you know, you got to be able to understand the problem in order to solve it. So, uh, you know, basically what I like to do is suggest that you use something called 
the rule of three. Now, if this is the first time uh, you're watching one of my videos, well, thank you for dropping by. But I do a lot of math word problems and I stress something called the rule of three. This is my rule. And even with using this rule, I still make mistakes. Now, the rule of three is read a problem at least three times uh, before you actually start working on it. So this is our third time reading the problem. Actually, it's maybe our fourth time. But, you know, just don't read the problem once and then start doing something, you know, because oftentimes you'll go in the wrong direction. But anyways, we have our problem here. We have two trains. They're passing each other. So, uh, you know, it's a good idea to model a problem, visualize it, because if you can see the problem, you're likely going to be able to see the solution. So let's go ahead and create a lovely little sketch of two trains and kind of like maybe try to represent the problem visually. All right, so here is my sketch, and you have to be somewhat good at creating these sketches. You don't, you don't have to be a perfect artist, but you have to have a pretty good sense of laying out information visually, right? So when you have a word problem, you need to take those words and try to graphically or you know visualize it in some sort of model. All right, so we have two trains. One train is going east, one train is going west. It's really not important, but they are passing there are passing, excuse me, one another. So one of these trains is going 85 miles per hour and another train is going 65 miles per hour. So again, we have two trains that are passing each other. One's going east, one's uh, going west. I guess this train right here is going west. This train's going east. But uh, the question is how long, excuse me, the question is how long before these two trains are 330 miles apart, right? So these trains are going to, you know, the little engineers up here are going to say, hey, how you doing? You know, Bill, hey, Bob, how are you doing? Whatever the case is, they're going to whiz by one another. You know, this train's going faster than this train. But, you know, there's going to be a certain uh, time frame that's going to elapse until this train and this train over here are uh, 330 miles apart. So that is the problem. So what do we need to do here? Well, as I indicated, we have to be able to relate uh, speed, rate, uh, or velocity. Okay, so we got to be able to relate uh, speed again. Now, uh, I'm using these different um, uh, words for speed. So a word like rate, okay, or velocity, or speed, uh, pretty much mean the same thing when we're talking about a word problem. But we have speed, we also have distance, and the question is, how long? So we got to be able to relate rate, time and distance and that is going to bring us to our lovely formula that uh, everyone needs to know and that is rate times time is equal to distance now this formula i would say it's typically introduced uh, at the maybe middle school math level but it is a formula that you will you you'll use over and over and again excuse me i'm kind of stumbling in my words but <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, rate times time is equal to distance. This is a formula that you absolutely need to know. Okay, so let's go ahead and correctly interpret the formula rate times time is equal to distance. So what's an example of a rate? Well, we have examples here like 85 miles per hour for this train. But let's take something super simple. Let's say a car is going 60 miles per hour. So just be careful or actually listen uh, very carefully to how I'm going to phrase this question. So if a car is going 60 miles per hour, how many miles will it travel in one hour? Okay, I'll say that again because this is a bit of a trick question. If a car is going 60 miles per hour, how, uh, how far will it travel in one hour? Now, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, the car is gonna go 60 miles, obviously because it's going 60 miles per every one hour. And that's absolutely right. So 60 miles is our rate, 60 miles per hour, excuse me. So we can just multiply that by one hour. Okay, that's our time. And our distance is in miles. So when you are using this formula, uh, we have to pay attention to the units of measure. Okay, so miles per hour a uh, good way to kind of think of that is, is miles per hour, like this. So this little P here, miles per hour, uh, is really a little division bar. So this is miles per hour. This is a rate. Basically, a rate, to give you this kind of technical definition, is a fraction where we are comparing uh, two different units of measure. In this case, we're comparing uh, distance to time. 
But when we multiply miles per hour times hours, okay, now I'm going to make this into a fraction by putting it over 1. So what's going to happen? Well, when we multiply two fractions, you're going to simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Here, our hours are going to cross cancel and we're left with just miles, okay? So you got to pay attention to the units of measure. And in our problem, because our rate these trains are going uh, are given to us in miles per hour and the distance is 330 miles well i can use this formula and our time will be in hours because i bring this up uh, because not every single problem is going to be as friendly as this problem right oftentimes you're going to have to uh, do some conversion in other words if i said all right a car is uh, went 30 feet and two seconds well, now we're talking about feet per second. How many miles will it go? Well, then you're going to have to convert uh, miles into feet or feet um, into miles. So you got to pay attention again to the units of measure when you're using this formula. But this formula is going to be key in solving all motion problems in mathematics. All right, so this is one aspect to figuring out the answer. Now, there is another interesting aspect to this problem. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that right now. All right, so the key really to figuring uh, this problem out, assuming you understand rate times time is equal to distance, is understanding that we're dealing with a relative motion problem. So you might be saying, relative motion, Mr. u math man, I don't even know what that means. What are you talking about? Well, here is the situation, okay? So we have this one train that's going 85 miles per hour this way, and in the opposite direction, this other train is going 65 miles per hour. So really, these trains are um, kind of leaving one another or you know, basically separating from one another at a rate of 150 miles per hour. It's the total sum of these two. Now, this is uh, uh, going to be confusing for a lot of you. Let me try to give you a simpler example. So let's suppose you're standing right here and your friend is standing right here and you start walking. Uh, in separate directions. And let's say you're going to walk really slow. And here, uh, one of you are going to walk one, one mile per hour. And here, uh, this other person is going to walk one mile per hour, right? So we're going to separate at one miles per hour, okay, in uh, you know, opposite directions. The relative speed here is two miles per hour. And this brings me to a uh, concept or a topic called vectors. Okay, now you might be saying vectors, that's, I don't know what that is. Well, vector mathematics is basically, you know, this concept of relative motion. So let me give you another example here because this is uh, really important. So let's suppose here is your lovely uh, airplane. Okay, so your airplane's flying maybe at 400 uh, miles per hour. Okay, no problem. Well, what happens if the uh, airplane has a 100 miles per hour tailwind, okay, kind of pushing it along. Well, it's real kind of um, true speed is going to be this wind speed, right? It's going to be pushing uh, the actual aircraft um, uh, that's already going 400 miles per hour. So it's going to get like a boost. So it's going to be 100 plus 400, which is going to be like 500 miles per hour. So this is why when you take flights from like, say, California to New York and there's a tailwind, well, you're going to get there faster. Well, the opposite is true because if you're going in, let's say, uh, from New York to California and you're flying at 400 miles per hour, but instead of a uh, tailwind, you have a headwind. In other words, you're flying into the wind. Well, that 100 miles per hour, let's suppose it's a 100 mile uh, per hour uh, uh, headwind, it's going to take away from your speed, right? So really, you're going to be making uh, like 300 miles per hour. I believe this is like ground speed. You know, I'm not a pilot, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. So we have to think in terms of relative motion. All right, so that is the key to uh, figuring this problem out. So these trains are separating at 150 miles per hour. Okay, that is the speed of separation. So now what we have to do is figuring out, all right, uh, how long will it take to uh, cover 330 miles at a speed of 150 miles per hour? All right, so let's go ahead and get to that next step. But first, let's do this and have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I had to throw this in because I definitely need your help to continue to grow my YouTube channel. Now, I think I've been on YouTube uh, definitely over 10 years, but I think it's going on like 14 years. And when I uh, started my channel, 
yeah, I put a few videos up there, but I really didn't get serious about YouTube until, well, I don't know, uh, some number of years ago. But uh, for me, my activity level has been increasing over and over again. I just uh, really enjoy trying to help uh, as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. But uh, what motivates me the most is helping people not give up on themselves, when, especially when it comes to learning math. Because learning math can be confusing. It could be like, I don't understand what's going on. And then people start feeling, you know, they start doubting their uh you know, intelligence. I'm not smart enough to learn this. I don't get this. Well, listen, you can absolutely be successful in mathematics, but it's going to take work. It's going to uh, take time. It's going to take commitment. But uh, most importantly, it's going to take great comprehensive math instruction. And that's what I like to do on my channel is to really take a problem and break it down in its components nice and slow and easy so everybody can understand. Because if you can understand how to solve one problem, well, then you're going to be able to understand how to solve a lot of different problems. Now, if you need additional help in algebra beyond what I'm showing you in this particular problem or in mathematics in general, check out my full main math courses. That's where you're going to find my best work. You'll see the links to those in the description of this video. Now, let's get back to the problem. All right, so this is not that difficult because these trains are separating at a relative speed of 150 miles per hour. So effectively, we, it's almost like um, having the problem of a train, one train, or let's just take one of these trains out of it, and uh, the problem is, well, how long will it take a train going 150 miles per hour uh, to cover 330 miles? Okay, so that's effectively the problem, but our 150 miles per hour is just kind of split up with one train going this way and one train going this way. So again, you know, this is the part of the problem that will probably confuse uh, probably uh, did confuse a lot of people, but uh, you know we are talking about something called again relative motion, and you learn this. You know if you didn't kind of understand this in a kind of a common sense way, you learn it in a more formal way when you study something called vector mathematics. Okay, and this is huge for those of you that are interested in uh, things like physics. Okay, and, and science vectors are everywhere. But uh, if you want to know about vectors and really get into learning them, well, you got to check out my pre-calculus course. I'll teach you everything you need to know about vectors. But let's go ahead and solve the problem. So uh, how long is it going to take us to cover 330 miles uh, going 150 miles per hour? Well, this is going to be pretty easy because we have rate times time is equal to distance. So our rate is 150 miles per hour. That is our combined uh, relative motion rate. Uh, so it's going to be rate times time. That's what we're looking for, right? And our time is going to be in hours. And that's going to be equal to distance, which, of course, is 330 miles. All right, so we have a basic algebra uh, formula here. So how do we solve for t? Pretty easy. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 150. So we got 330 divided by 150. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to give us 2.2 hours. All right, so that is the solution and again, uh, you know, all you know, the math that we really had to do here was just uh, solve this basic algebra equation, uh, 150t equals 330. But that is not the hard part of the problem, in my opinion. Uh, the more uh, interesting part of this problem is the relative motion aspect of it. Assuming you already know this formula here, rate times time is equal to distance. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this little problem. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.